Hey, watch it. Trying to crack my skull? Relax. I didn't see you. Ah, new in town, are you? Here for the new semester? No, not a student. Do you know many of them? Yeah, a good deal. My name is David. How can I help you? My pleasure. I'm looking for information on a student who would have attended Vinificus University around two decades ago. <laughs> good luck. That's an awfully long time. Perhaps try asking the professors. Although, from what I hear, their office hours get very... crowded. Perfect. One of them has to remember him. And perhaps. Mages do have exceedingly good memories. You see, I myself attend night class at the university. And they know everybody by name. I might be able to connect you with the right people. For the right price. What are you looking for? A small favor. I need a package retrieved nearby. I'd go there myself, but there are... extenuating circumstances. Do this for me, and I'll help you any way I can. It's a deal. Don't tell me. You're David. No. I'm here to pick something up. You ain't getting crap. I know he's around here someplace. I think you should give me the packet before someone gets hurt. What? That guy shorted me 500 auras. What is he, your lover? All right. Here's the 500. Coughing up your hard-earned money for that piece of shit? Gullible prick. Here's your package. Enjoy it. Back again? Do you have my package? Sure do. Hey, thanks a lot. By the way, there was someone after it. They seemed to believe you owed him something. Ah, shit, him again. For a while I thought he'd forgotten it. Yes, he was a customer of mine. But the relationship ended... badly. What about my information? Yeah, sure. I know two people you might want to speak to. Most in our class consider them suck-ups, so they may be able to goad some of the professors into talking. His name is Sarius, hers Angie. Speak to them, and you may find what you're looking for. And don't forget to mention my name. They may be skittish otherwise. I'll let him know. Good man. Well, I'm off to the market. Take care of yourself.
Yeah. Are you a student here? Yeah. <sighs> More like a prisoner. Now let's see. Three petals of mandivore root. A single drop of oil of Cutharia. Am I bothering you? Oh, sorry, no. I have an exam tomorrow, you see, uh, very stressed. Wait, what was I saying? If I only had that damn book. What book do you need? You wouldn't know it. It's just the textbook I lost. I can't find it anywhere. I offered a reward for it, but I can't pay much. I'm afraid whoever may have found it got a higher price selling it to someone else. What if I offered to help you find your book? Truly? I'd be indebted to you more than you know. It's an old volume called Of Ancient Artifacts. If you find it, I'll be here. You'll stay here until I let you go. Thanks for opening the door. I've been locked in here for hours. You have? Yes. Dr. LaFoy saw it a fitting punishment. For what? Well, it requires a bit of exposition. I've got time. I invented a way to communicate without words. A type of extrasensory perception, if you will. Using earrings I make from the glands of a creature that has telepathic properties. These things aren't easy to come by either. I have to trade with the scavengers to get them, but the risk was worth the reward. My device gained immediate popularity around campus, but there were some unforeseen side effects. What kind of side effects? You don't want to know. Don't make me ask twice. All right. Depression, anxiety, even a few suicides have been reported, but there's no proof they were related to my invention. With such close proximity to the brain, the magical broadcast seems to disrupt certain thought patterns. At least, that's my theory. And it's causing people to kill themselves? You need to get it off the street as soon as possible. I know. What can we do about this? Kill the creature whose glands I used. The signal only works as long as it's alive. Something to do with the... cell structure of the gland. The way they communicate allows the host to do the same. Oh, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. That's just a theory anyway. Nobody's ever even seen a cell. At least, not in New Ashos. So the stigma will stop once the creature's dead? Right. I would have already solved this problem myself, had I not been locked up. You really are a lifesaver. Just tell me where to go. That may be a problem. You're gonna have a hard time. I hid the thing and surrounded it with traps so it wouldn't directly harm the other students. These little devils can be violent. I think I can handle it. If you say so, I'll mark the spot on your map. Can you use your invention to tell the other students they're in danger? I've tried. It's no use. The creature can sense your intentions. Some sort of defense mechanism. It moderates communication accordingly. Mine has been thoroughly blocked. Stay put. I'm going to look into this. I owe you for this.
Can I help you? You must be serious. David said you might know a professor who could help me with some information about a former student here. David said that? Uh, I don't know if I can help you. The only professor I'm terribly close with is new here, although she is well connected. You help me, and I'll return the favor. I would, but I'm quite busy. You picked the wrong time of year to be recruiting students in New Ashes. Although, I am having a party to celebrate the end of exams, and we don't have entertainment yet. Maybe I could be of some assistance. Yeah! I was thinking that as well! My friend Lisa dances. She's very... seductive, if you get my meaning. Could you bring her to the party? I'd consider offering you my help if you did. This is something you can't do personally? I'm not allowed in the girls' quarters. I'll invite Lisa to the party. Great! She asks for a small fee of 200 auras. I'll cover that. See that she's ready on time. You're new here. Are you, Lisa? <laughs> yeah. Have we met? A friend of mine named Sirius is throwing a party, and he'd like you to make an appearance. Would you be interested? So he needs a dancer. I was hoping it would be you. Sure, I'll do it. If the money's right. What's your offer? Would you dance for 200 hours an hour? 200? All right. Let Sarius know he's gonna get the show of his life. The money sounds right. Okay, I'll do it. Well, what did she say? She'll dance for 200 hours per hour. Oh, very nice. Some of these boys have never seen a female form in person. Sounds like you're both in for an interesting night. Now, about that professor. Oh, yes, of course. Her name is Dr. Anaya. She's fairly new, but she knows everybody. I'm guessing if she doesn't have the information you need, she'll know someone who does. Unfortunately, I have a party to prepare for, so I can't introduce you. 
Uh, tell her you helped me write my thesis. She gave me the highest marks in the class. That's all right, Sirius. I appreciate your help. Have a few drinks for me, will ya? I can't see you now. I'm afraid I'm quite overwhelmed. Dr. Naya, it's urgent. One of your students, Sarius, gave me the impression you could help me. Oh? Sarius, yes. One of my brighter students. You are friends with Sarius and in a time of need? Well, I suppose a few minutes of my time won't hurt. So, you'll help me? Why, of course. The least I can do for someone who helps my students is to listen. I'm looking for information on a student who was enrolled here about 20 years ago. Is this about the creation of the Swallows? The Swallows? The Verita Waste outside the city, formed by an unsanctioned student experiment. As research is quite difficult to perform in such a deadly climate, nobody knows for certain why it exists. How do you know so much about it? You're so young. <sighs> Thank you. But truth be told, I know little more about it than what I've just described. It's a taboo subject, I'm afraid. A failure of the faculty to monitor their students. I may be able to direct you to someone who knows more, but I can't imagine it would be much help. Why do you say that? I'm only the Dean of the Faculty of Nature, a relatively weak position, hierarchically speaking. Quite simply, I'm not sure dropping my name would be enough to convince him to speak with you. The faculty here must really mistrust each other. <sighs> no, it's not that. Because of the incidents of the past, we just can't be very candid with outsiders. And despite what some of my colleagues will tell you, there remain some serious problems to this day. There's a rumor that a male faculty member recently assaulted a female student. And as I've heard, it wasn't the first time. Over the past few years, some of our best and brightest girls have abandoned their studies with no justifying reason, and on extremely short notice. I'm beginning to suspect why. Did they report it? Not directly, but I know my students. You learn to ignore lapses in effort. But the more I look... When I confronted him, I nearly lost my job. He's one of the old boys club, a circle I'm not a part of. Now there are rumors circulating that I tried to seduce him. Tell me how I can help. The university can't afford another scandal, but perhaps you could convince him to retire, if you take my meaning. I'll take care of it. Very well. This must remain discreet. His name is Rhodius. His office shouldn't be difficult to find. Snooping, are we? Wouldn't dream of it. The boss has his eye on you. Watch your back. What kind of person threatens an honest citizen? We both know there's more to you than meets the eye. Just who does your boss think he is? Tread carefully. The boss watches everything you do. How dare you enter without permission? You must be Professor Rhodius. What's it to you? I don't have time for New Ashos's rabble. Let's just say I'm a voice for someone who doesn't have the courage to speak yet. I think we both know you've been more than unfair towards your female students. Don't reach for your staff. Try anything sudden, and you'll force me to make it hurt. What are you saying, man? I'm one of the most decorated and respected teachers at this university. 
My ethics have never been called into question. I'll bet you've been sent by that envious bitch Anaya, haven't you? Doesn't matter. You're not talking your way out of this. Wait, listen. Anaya lied. She's been trying to destroy my career ever since she was hired. She can't stand being under the authority of men, especially one so respected in the mage community. Whatever she's paying you, trust me, I can double it. I don't want your money. I'm looking for some information. I'll tell you whatever you want. I'm listening. You won't regret it. Not a word she's told you is true. I never mentioned the professor. You did. Oh, no more of your semantics, so I may enjoy the fruits of my labor as would any man in a position of power. Can you tell me you wouldn't do the same? Surely you understand. Think hard about what you're telling me, Rodius. The way I see it, these girls would sell their own parents to get ahead. You wouldn't believe some of the carnal offers I've had from my female students over the years. Two, three, four at a time. But mostly I simply refuse. But I am only a man, I do have needs. Or I never touched her until she asked me to. So you and the student did have a relationship? Of course we did. She wasn't the first. Young minds are so passionate. Yet so short of what makes one wise. This was a price she was willing to pay, and it was a fair exchange. We both got something we wanted. Now, you want to talk about a criminal? Look no further than your friend, Professor Anaya. What about her? She not only takes advantage of students, she even recruited several into her own brothel service. She's turned a pretty aura on the side. Look into the Black Rose Escort Company, if you don't believe me. Did you see her dress? Smell her perfume? You think she can afford that on a teacher's salary? Why doesn't anybody know about this? Of course they do. But not as many as you'd think. I only found out once she approached me with a business proposal. Anaya was under the impression I could recruit her new talent. You can imagine how quickly I refused. Do you still doubt why she has animosity towards me? Gods help you if you're lying to me. Oh, you again. Hello. Seems that academia isn't your only calling. Why don't you tell me about your work on the side, Doc? <sighs> Whatever do you mean? I know about the brothel service. You recruit your female students to accompany your male clients, and then reap in the profits. Did you really think I wouldn't find out? It's not like that. Please, you must believe me. No? Then explain the Black Rose. You've been misinformed. Please, just listen. You've got an uphill battle with this one, Doc. Will you just be rational? For the love of the gods, just hear me out. My patience has been worn very thin by all this running around. Tell me the truth, or you can consider this a lost cause. The Black Rose service is mine, and yes, it does provide outside employment for some of my female students who have trouble paying tuition. If you think you're doing them a service intervening, trust me, you're not. Rhodius lied. Their involvement is strictly voluntary. Is that so? Would I be able to operate my business otherwise? New Ashos is a city, but it's a small one. Everyone knows each other. So you don't force them to work for you? Gods, no! I'm telling you. Rhodius is trying to divert your attention from the severity of his crimes. I believe the girl he took advantage of is finally willing to talk. Will you speak with her? That seems like a good idea. Very well. But only if you promise to be gentle. 
She's a fragile bird, and one wrong word could set us back for weeks. Remember, ultimately we want her to speak out against Rhodius. Don't worry, I'll be gentle. Then, in that case, it's Angie. Tell her I sent you. I implore you, be delicate with her. It begs saying twice. remember you. I saw you earlier. Angie, listen. Dr. Anias requested that I speak to you about Rhodius and the Black Rose. I need you to be truthful. A lot of people's lives could be ruined if you're dishonest with me right now. She told you? She promised she wouldn't tell anyone. Your secret's safe with me, Angie. But I don't see anyone else working to resolve this. You're going to have to take a risk and trust me. I suppose. If Anaya did, maybe I ought to as well. Rodeus did force himself on me. He invited me over under the false pretense of discussing an exam I failed. I don't think I need to explain what happened next. No, that won't be necessary. I've thought about ending it. Taking my life, I mean. Dr. Anaya saw me crying. I told her what happened and she comforted me even convinced me not to quit the university. Then she told me about Black Rose, in case I did end up dropping out and needed a way to make ends meet. It's not as bad as you think. The girls are treated very well. That's no life for you, Angie. Well, perhaps not. But don't be so quick to judge. It's not the kind of escort service you have in mind. Men pay women for their company, nothing more. It never becomes physical unless the girl wants it to. Though, I'm sure Rhodius would have you believe otherwise. I find that a little hard to believe. Believe what you want. It's the truth. And if you're a girl who doesn't come from money, it can be an excellent way to make connections in the upper class. Not to mention pay for school. So, Rhodius lied. Yes. He's a monster. Utterly incapable of sensing another's emotions. He's only out for what he wants. I stole his notebook. Thought it would give me insight into what happened. I didn't make it more than a few pages. It's yours if you want it. If evidence is your concern, it's all there. I believe you, but I'll need that notebook. I store the pages in my locker. Don't say I didn't warn you.
Did you speak to Angie? She appears to be telling the truth. I also recovered some pages from the professor's notebook. I have a much better appreciation for what's going on. Hmm. <laughs> Glad you finally came around. He's done this repeatedly, you know. Angie's not the first. None of them walked away unchanged. Young Lisa, for instance? I won't even tell you what she does for a living these days. No need. I'm going to put an end to Rhodius once and for all. Best of luck. Try not to get caught up in remorse. I'd say he deserves the worst you could do to him. Mind your manners! Back with more of Anaya's lies? Actually, I spoke with Angie. Interesting how she doesn't seem to say the opposite of what you did about your relationship. I read that journal of yours, too. Cute. My journal? That doesn't prove anything. Students break into my office every year. That document was reported missing days ago. She's had all the time in the world to alter it. And as I recall, she's adept at forgery. I wonder if that argument would convince the Magistrate. I'll make this simple. I'm ruling you guilty as charged. My offer still stands, but not for long. Leave now, and never come back. Unless, of course, you'd rather be a eunuch. Your commitment to these lying thieves sickens me. What a fool you are, young man. For shame! I just gave you my word I wouldn't kill you. But I never promised to leave you in one piece. Don't push your luck. I... you... you wouldn't. Enough! I'll tolerate no more! Then do it, and quit whining. All right. You win. I'll hand in my resignation at once. Have you no compassion? You're not in any position to be asking for my sympathy. Fair enough. Tell the doctor. She's won. I will. And if it's any consolation, I won't come looking for you, as long as you stay out of New Ashes. You've got trouble minding your own business. I don't see how it's any of yours. It's the boss that's interested. He likes having peace and quiet around here. You're upsetting the balance. I think you've got me wrong. I'm just passing through town. Well, you're shit out of luck then, aren't you? Just be straightforward. What do you want? Just letting you know you're on thin ice. The next time I see you, won't be on friendly terms. Watch it! Any progress with that monster? He'll never hurt another female student again. He's going to resign. Well, that's wonderful news. I'm not convinced the proper justice has been served, but, considering the circumstances, it will have to do. You've done Angie a favor I'm not sure she can ever repay. Nor I. You could let me mine your knowledge of the university a little, like we agreed. You'd do better to talk to Dr. Lavarius. I hate to send you off on another wild Grom chase, 
but I fear I simply don't have sufficient information to help you. I'm sorry if you feel this is an affront. I had to do something to help Angie, and no one else was willing to take her side. I do hope you understand. I can't say it puts you on my good side, but I see why you did it. 